What's up, y'all? So Chestnut. This is my new format, episode one, Rodeo to 2000. Basically, I believe I can hit 2000 ELO in chess on chess.com within five years. So in this episode, I'm going to be going over how I went up. I went up in ELO, one point blitz, 51 points in rapid, and then 187 ELO in bullet. And I only played one game. I have timestamps below if you want to skip to my epiphany of the week, the problem of the week, or what I've been studying this week. But timestamps will be in the description if you want to skip around. I don't care if you watch the whole video, but I would like you to. So let's get straight into it. I'm going to go over the game that got me 107 ELO, one game. So my first week of um, taking chess a little more seriously, I got this funny result. You know, I've never seen a 187 from one game. But it turns out I've only played one game of Bullet before this on chess.com. So uh, that's kind of how this happened. But just to start it over, um, I'm black and I, I've, you know, looked back and thought, wow, I'm terrible with black. I mean, I have absolutely no clue what I'm doing at all with black. I literally just kind of wing it every single time. So it's a little embarrassing but if you know something i need to improve on i'm gonna get to the game so i just kind of do whatever i'm already missing you know i'm just missing pieces it's not it's not going good from the start i figured at this point uh you know i'm threatening his knight but as well as threatening the knight i'm targeting the the pawn on e4 at least that was my idea given in bullet it's not like you have great ideas i mean there's only two minutes <laughs> how much can you really do so he defends i decide to take anyway i think i had the broken idea that after he takes with the knight i'm gonna check him there and then take this pawn not realizing that he's just gonna He's just gonna do that. So, I mean, I wasted a move here, and at this point in the game, I feel like I probably should have just lost. You know, um, I'm playing pretty bad, terrible opening, and <laughs> hey, this is the the rodeo to 2000. So, if you don't think I can do 2000, I understand if this is the first game you're you're ever seeing from me. It is not impressive. Um, I did get that nice fort, but I'm already behind the knight so it doesn't really matter but i you know there's also opportunities in that obviously here i pin the knight so that's pretty nice um he doesn't have any you know he can defend the knight but he doesn't have any attacks on my king at this point that i see so i'm feeling pretty good he defends the knight i just attack the knight again keep it pretty simple nothing overly complicated now he's defending the knight so good that I'm I'm pretty much thinking that I just need to do something else. So, I mean, that idea is not going that great. I try to get my knight involved here, but it just, I mean, this is just a weird, hard position to think about. And, yeah, I just, you know, I kind of jump back, not sure exactly what to do here. Um, he castles, I castle. I feel like, you know, having my rook involved couldn't be the worst thing ever. But, you know, now I'm getting nervous. Because he has a... He would have had a discover check with a knight. Unless I moved my king, queen somewhere. And I didn't really feel like... I didn't really feel like I had a great place to put it. So, you know, my thinking when I only have a minute is not that impressive. So, yeah, that, I just won a bishop free, so, felt pretty good there. I don't know, I went back instead of forward on exit. So yeah, right here, I'm starting to feel a little better, because I see some ways that, you know, I can maybe do some damage, like, uh, possibly throwing the knight there. He invites the queen trade. I decided to take it. I actually don't remember much of my reasoning here. I think part of it was that I, I was kind of stressed on time. 
which kind of leads me to my epiphany, but that's later in the video. Timestamp below if, if you want to know. My big epiphany for the week. So after the queen trade, I feel like uh, I felt like this is a good move. I feel like worst case scenario, I win a pawn. Best case scenario, I, I win a uh, rook. I'm not exactly sure why I didn't take the rook there. I kind of feel like it was a smarter move to just take the, I mean, not take the rook, take the pawn on uh, B2. So I don't really know what I was thinking, but you know, you only got a couple minutes. So right here, he blunders a rook. I probably, oh no, no. I thought about taking with my rook, but then he would win my other rook. It'd be nice to have a check in there with that, but it just didn't work out that way. So yeah, right now, I'm feeling pretty good because we traded down. He made a big blunder. You can't blunder that big in a, in a game of bullet, you know? And uh, this is my first time playing Increment. I, li I literally just never played it before for some reason, and I love it. I, it's actually leading to my epiphany, but I'll get to that later in the video. Timestamp below. So yeah, I just had a pretty good game. Um, at this point, I feel like he was like too worried about time. He only has five seconds, even though it's increment. So there's just there's just nothing he can do there. Um, right there, I thought was pretty beautiful. Of course, I take. Right here, he definitely should have went up. Um, not that it would have made much of a difference, but him going down just leads to this checkmate that I ended up getting. So this game gave me 187 ELO at Bullet. So that's pretty cool. It's only my second game of Bullet on chess.com. So pretty funny stuff. So in this game, I'm playing against someone uh, named Chocolate Muff. And um, pretty simple stuff. I mean, the opening is pretty much um, something I kind of play regularly. It's not that I know any depth of the opening, it's just what I'm used to playing. And I feel like I kind of exposed myself because like everything's pretty standard. I feel like I'm developing as well as I know how to at this point. Um, I'm even feeling pretty good because, you know, I feel like I'm taking up more space than he is. And he doesn't really have any great moves to go to. You know, I'm pushing back his pieces uh, just one step at a time. At this point, I feel very confident that I can just kind of keep pushing pawns. Um, and, I'll, and I'll definitely win some material. So that's how I'm thinking in, in this moment. And right here is where I feel like I just made kind of a stupid mistake, which is uh, where the epiphany set in that I... Uh, I don't know any middle game, <laughs> so um, along with not knowing any middle game, I am just very bad at chess, and I think the reason, well, let me get to the move. I play knight d5, and when I played this, I had no idea why I played this. Um, I have four minutes, so it's not like it's like the smallest time frame, but I just feel like I didn't calculate there was probably a much better move that if if I looked hard enough and I just feel like that's one of my flaws of thinking and I think I got this flaw because I really just don't um, I don't calculate things at all and that's probably halfway due to playing fast chess instead of slow chess so I, I watched this Lula Robs video and she mentioned in it to start playing slower chess and I thought I mean, that's a really good point because I get in all these positions and I don't have to think my way out of them because I, I tell myself like, oh, I'm short on time or something. And then I don't go back and review the game. So not only am I not thinking through the position during the game, but I'm not really thinking through it after the game. So I'm going to start playing slower chess. That is my big epiphany. And also, I'm terrible at middle game positions like this. Um, I don't calculate at all. I forgot what I was thinking here. I think if he takes the knight, then I have a, yeah, I have a discover check with the bishop, which I think that's a good tactic. But like I said, I didn't really calculate his position. 
Um, obviously, I'm winning. I'm winning material on this discovered check, but that that's not necessarily meaning that that's what I should have done. Um, now, obviously, here I'm feeling like very good. I'm not exactly sure how to get around everything that's going on, but uh, right there, obviously, I could do some damage. So keeping it simple. Right there, I'm just defending my bishop. Um, now this move is another move where I'm not 100% sure if I should have did it, but again, when you play short times like, like I was this game, I think it was a five minute game or whatever, um, you just don't think about those things and you're not getting better at chess if you're playing fast chess. You're getting better at fa at timed chess. You know what I mean? Like the game in its purity, you're not getting better at. So right there, he just he just blunders a piece. Um, now even if he if he took with the pawn, I was just happy to have that trade down because either way, I'm gonna try to get him off of that square, and I just felt like there's not much to do. But once I win the queen, I mean. The game's pretty much over at that point. I actually don't even... Once he moved there, I could have went straight to the queen right there. But um, but instead I defended my bishop. So that was another thing where if I had thought with more time, I could have probably just ignored that attack on the bishop because it wasn't really going to matter when I have that type of thing going on. Um, so yeah, I win this game. Pretty happy, but... It reveals some big flaws in my thinking, and and I'm thankful for that as well. Um, I'll link the Lula video in the description if you want to know her ideas on improving. I thought it was a great video, so I'm going to shout it out. So here's a game where I'm playing 10 minute. Uh, still wasn't playing increment for the week yet. Um, now I think I'm only going to play increment because I, act I actually think, so I'm around, you know, 1050 now i think if i just play increment change nothing else i think i'll get a 1200 i don't know if that's a little uh you know ambitious or whatnot but that's just how i feel um i didn't realize my time was such a bad thing for my chest so but right here i'm feeling pretty good uh pretty typical opening that that i would see in a game i feel like i have the upper hand and he makes this move this knight move and I think I make the same move, and the, I guess the idea is, you know, if I take, he takes, and then he's threatening my knight. But uh, I just remember he made the move kind of fast. Not super fast or anything, but it felt fast in the moment. And I remember thinking, did he even have an idea behind that, or was it just, like, that's the first thing I thought of. So I actually took a moment and played a, a completely different move. So switching it up, not being so... Um, not reacting so fast you know I'm not sure exactly what I should have played there I have to look deeper at it but on with the game also I don't want to get like super in-depth or even try to get super in-depth I'm just gonna you know post some cool games that I thought about throughout the week um, interesting positions maybe tactics that I found just a fun little recap nothing crazy um, I'm not that good at chess so I don't feel like I should be the one teaching you all this stuff. Um, right here, I'm pretty happy. I just feel like, you know, his king is really not, really not doing too hot. So, him taking there, I just feel like that was a really bad move, and I and I do a pretty good job of exposing it. And there, I, I'm not sure I should have took there. I maybe should have uh, just went to my next idea. So right there, obviously, I'm I'm threatening that, but I see this is where I'm playing not thinking chess. I'm playing on the clock. As soon as he does that, I could have made that move, you know, and I I could have even instead of taking with with my pawn right there, I could have went. Uh, Bishop f8, stopping him from doing anything, also offering up what looks like a free piece. 
Um, probably would have been better than pointlessly taking that. I mean, when you have an attack like that, and and I do get the win, so pretty cool. I felt good about that one, and then I just remember thinking my like my main thought of that game was. Did he really think out that night move, or did he just throw it out like I throw out so many, so many times? So I'm trying to, you know, change my process of thinking about chess. Um, just be a little more critical, be a little more patient. Just because somebody's attacking you doesn't mean you have to attack them back. At least not in the same area. You don't have to respond to every attack, is what I'm saying. So then the second game, it kind of starts the same, right? So. We get to this position, and I'm playing black this time, and as you know earlier, I'm terrible with black, so I'm a little bit panicked. But it's still 10 minutes, still, you know, something I'm kind of familiar with here. And I do kind of the same thing. So, I'm not sure I wouldn't have played this to begin with, but, uh, you know, I can't help but think, what if I played anything else? You know, um... Maybe even like play B uh, B four. So after his next move, if I throw the pawn up to defend, I don't know. I just feel like I did the same thing that I thought he did. I don't know. Maybe he really thought of the move. <laughs> Maybe that was the best move. I don't know. Just surface level. I threw my knight up there because my knight was threatened, and I didn't think any further in depth about it. Right here, too, I, I don't even know that I realized I could just take that. <laughs> um, so I need to start playing slower chess, taking more time. Um, you know, once you're run, running low on time, on when if you're playing increment, then, you know, you can, you can really make the time stretch. So, yeah, I maybe should have just took there. But the game devolves. I'm I'm feeling pretty scared right now. But uh. But I, I also feel like okay, I'm attacking the heck out of his queen. So. You know when he first, I always get nervous when a queen takes on g2 or g7 or b7 or the twos when they're on the other side. Just like man, I'm I'm losing something. Now that seems like a weird move. I'm not even sure why I did that. That's an, I, I can't help but think there was a better move there. I mean, maybe even... Maybe h4. I'm not sure. I don't remember my thought process behind that one. Um, and then I lose my rook anyway, so... <laughs> as you can see, I'm playing pretty stupid chess. Do I win this game? What the heck? <laughs> I really thought I had something in this moment, you can tell. So hey, that might be my blunder of the week. That is embarrassing. You know, I could have just, you know, put at King F8 or something, but man, that is bad. Okay. <laughs> I make my blunder of the week. And this is weird, because I thought I thought he was aiming for that. Like, as soon as he checked me there, I knew, like, oh, he's picking up my rook. Then he makes this awful move. So, obviously, I got to take it. My queen's already pinned. I'm already losing my queen. I got to take it. Then I just continue playing this game. Right there, he made a huge mistake. So, I mean, it's, it's cool that the rook is pinned. But it's not cool when you see that my bishop's just waiting on it. Yeah, right here, I'm, I think I got pretty confident now because, you know, what is he going to do? And I even offer the rook trade. Um, my pawns are just too powerful. My king's already in the middle. Like, nothing is happening to me in this game, I don't feel like. At this point, too, I have, I have seven and a half minutes, man. I mean, that's kind of a lot. So, yeah, I just... Uh, here, I'm just being really careful... Making sure I don't mess up anything too bad. I don't remember if I finished this on a checkmate. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. He's just chasing my pawns, not looking for it. I was looking for it. There you go. I win that game. So, those two games were just kind of interesting because I feel like the first game I felt like my opponent didn't, uh, didn't really calculate the middle game. And then the second game against the same opponent, I do the same exact thing that I thought he was doing. So, <laughs> silly. That was a terrible game, honestly. Looking back at that game is embarrassing. Um, not that I'm so much better than that. I make blunders all the time. It's just just looking at them. You got to review your games, man, because stuff like that can happen, and that's not going to help your self-esteem. This game took me to 1072. It's a 10-minute game, um, not increment. And, yeah, let's get into it. Um, I'm going to play this one a little fast because the video is getting pretty long. But I'm doing all the pretty much standard stuff uh, as far as, you know, not knowing any openings and being awful at chess. And I don't know what I was like. I just let him take the knight. And it, it's honestly, all the stuff that I let him get away with in this one is, is pretty embarrassing. And I don't even know how I won this game. See, I'm, I'm really chasing the queen heavy. I'm covering a lot of squares. Um, he's having to go to pretty much the only safe square. I think here a better move probably would have been um, d4 with my pawn. Just because then I could, uh, you know, attack him with the bishop right there. I don't know. But I'm chasing the pawn. He decides to seal up the position with, uh, with that pawn. You know, it is what it is. I thought, that's pretty cool. His queen has nowhere to go. <laughs> so his queen is trapped. And I should have, you know, worked a little harder to keep it trapped, but I didn't. Then right here, I just had to, like, throw away a piece because cause I'm playing like an idiot, you know. So right here, I'm like, man, how did this even, like, how did this position get so ugly and so bad? And he's up six points now, so, like, I'm kind of just upset. Um, I don't even remember my idea behind the pawn push just to open up the position, try to try to do anything, just anything. Here I'm feeling okay. You know, it's attacking the queen. I feel like he doesn't have any great attacks, so I'm not feeling that bad. Obviously, I'm threatening uh, threatening checkmate here, so. Well, I thought I was. His queen defends that square. <laughs> At the time, though, I remember thinking like, oh, yeah, I got checkmate. So, you know, when he threatens the queen trade, I figure I'll put it there. This uh, this file or whatever, it, it'll look pretty good once my, once my uh, works behind my queen. And really why I wanted to keep this game is just, <laughs> it gets really funky here. And again, I do this thing where I feel like I'm making moves before... Like, I'm making the wrong move sometimes. I'll show you. Oh, no, no, I was waiting. So I, I saw that the the rook was behind the king. You know, so if I can get my queen over here, it works well. I think at the time I thought, oh, yeah, the queen's, you know, kind of defending that space. And he, he's obviously happy to offer a queen trade. So go there. I pick up the rook. And I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling like... At least I'm picking up pieces, but now he's attacking me with his other rook. Things are getting kind of ugly. I even feel like my queen can be a little bit trapped, so. And here I'm just thinking, man, I'm about to lose. Uh, a pretty terrible position. I don't, again, I don't know how I won this game. This is awful. My idea behind that. I don't think I had an idea behind that. <laughs> I can't really, I can't come up. I think I just thought like maybe at this point, now that I'm about to get checkmated, the queen trade doesn't sound that bad. Um, so I'm thinking he he takes and then then we trade down queens, but then he checks me again, which I thought was like very strange. I'm just trying to avoid a checkmate there. He checks me again, goes back to the position, you know, we had just offered each other, which is funny, you're only one move separated from that. Um, I went a piece, so 
I'm like, okay, maybe there's a chance. You know, after winning that night, I'm feeling kind of good. He only has a light square bishop, so I'm thinking if I can just keep it on the dark squares, something like that. So now he now he offers the queen trade, and I find this beautiful tactic that um that I don't know. See if you can see if you can spot this tactic to win the win the queen for free. I don't know if you pause it or what, but I'm doing it now. F1 wins the queen, so obviously all these squares are covered. So he has to back away from the queen's defense, and I felt like that was pretty cool. He decides to defend with the queen. I don't know that it's any better than, you know, just letting the queen trade happen, but at this point, you know, I just won the game. It's pretty cool. That's cool. Um, I think he forfeited here, so pretty cool game. I thought that tactic was was kind of fancy after a hideous game, and obviously I have a lot of room for. So here's a game I played on Le Chess, and um, I just like to play Le Chess when I'm not playing as serious. Um, I don't care about my Elo on there as much, even though, ironically, my Elo on Le Chess is like way higher. I'm a uh, rated 1320 in Rapid on Le Chess, so. Or blitz, yeah, blitz. That's even weirder. <laughs> so <laughs> I get to this position. Um, he takes there with the queen. I figure I'm just gonna open up this position like wide open. And I'm also thinking of this next move, which is uh, lifting the rook up, threatening the king very badly. Um, you know, depending on where he moves, I could even have a checkmate. So I'm feeling pretty good. Right there, I decide to push the king away, which I don't even know that that was the best thing to do. Let me think about that. You know, if I just t took it, the king would still be a, a little more compromised. He couldn't go to the other side. So, uh, yeah, maybe that would have been better, but that's not what I did. And the reason I picked up this game is I make a mistake at the end, which I don't really notice at first. I'm feeling pretty good right now because I think, you know, I got two attackers there, even though he's got two defenders. He goes there, which I think is great because it uh it gives me a pocket for my queen. Feeling pretty good right now, you know. I'm like, okay. Um, now also this pawn is pinned so I thought like okay now I can just take there but um I actually make the mistake and he, he ran out of time here this is my last move but it's a mistake and it it loses material because because I don't have a check if he were to take with the queen he takes with the queen yeah I win his queen but then he takes with that then you know I just have a knight compared to his knight and a rook. So, big mistake. Um, I thought at the time that just because that's pinned, it would work out for me. But I didn't. I didn't think about the tempo. So I should have should have definitely just taken there. The pin doesn't matter if he's gonna get your queen right after it, you know. So that was a big mistake I made on the chess and. Gotta make sure that everything's right when you're when you're going on a heavy attack like that. Gotta double check everything. So I saw this post on Reddit and I thought I'd share it with you on the recap this week. Um, Mate in one. So I looked at this thing, I swear, like minutes. And I'm just sitting there frustrated like, dude, a mate in one should not be this hard. And the, the caption made it more, even more frustrating because it said, uh, I made a mate in one that stockfish couldn't solve. So I'm like, a mate in one, what are you talking about? I looked at this for a hot minute before I realized it did not say mate in one. It's a mate in 11. So I just thought that was funny. A uh, good Reddit post by Grow RL. But yeah, I just misread it. Thought it was funny, thought I'd share. Um, also, if hey, if you wanna solve the mate in 11, be my guest, I'm not doing so my book of the week or my studies of the week were uh, 
honestly terribly weak because I'm just starting. I don't even really know what my study plan is. Um, so I'm reading this book, How to Study Your Own Chest by Devorin. Not even gonna try to say his last name. I'll put it in the link. But uh, it was going over the Philidor checkmate position. And, uh, and I remember I was looking at this just thinking like, I don't know, man. I don't really know when um, when I'll end up in this position, even just the pieces. Then I look at my last La Chess game of that day, and I, obviously not the same position, but it is you know very similar piece ideas. Um, you know, if he if he were to check me with a C1 right here, I would take on E2, and then you know. Obviously, I'd, I'd have the literal same pieces that were in the book. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, you know, just the power of studying. It really does study. And as for my plans, I still got to make a... I want to make like a somewhat rigid routine where I'm going to track different stuff. But for the first episode of this, I'm just a little lost because the how to study chess on your own book is is great but it is you know very very over my head and some of the things he's saying to do i just don't know that i'm really ready to do them yet so i'm just gonna keep it basic um i'm at such a low elo that anything could help like as i mentioned earlier in the video i literally don't even know any black openings i just kind of wing it as i go so I'm just kind of winging it this week. I'll try to make a better structure and once and when I do, then I'll definitely share what my more structured game plan for getting to 2000 is. But for now, I'm just learning whatever, watching chess videos um, and reading what other people's plans are. I'm going to be honest, this book is kind of hard and like it's going to take me a while just to just to get through all of his ideas. So. Hope you enjoyed this. This is my my first episode of Rodeo to 2000. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, this is pretty much the only content I'm going to be posting. So if it's something you're interested in, you know, come enjoy the road with me. Do you think I can hit 2000? I'm thinking within five years I could hit 2000 with a good study method and playing seriously and, and, and dedicating some time to it. I think I could hit 2000 on chess.com not fide i don't even care if it's rapid blitz bullet whatever i just want to hit 2000 once on chess.com that's it